Hi, my name is Kang Lee. I'm the co-founder and creative director of Hawking from Adhesive Games. So can you talk about your gaming background and projects before Hawking? Uh, so prior to Hawking, uh, uh, actually, some of the founders here as well were coming off from another project called uh, Project Offset. It was a fantasy FPS, and it had a really cool uh, technology game engine as well. And we were um, acquired by Intel at some point. And um, after the acquisition is when we, we started Hawking. But um, even before that, it's just me freelancing for various games and movie company as a concept artist. My background was illustration, so um, I always just love creating fantasy and sci-fi and really cool worlds. Yeah. That's and where did the idea for Hawking come from? Uh, Hawking sort of came from just uh, my passion for mech games and at the same time logistically it fits very well for like a small startup because after Offset um, and you know and Intel we wanted to do something very sort of small and um, something that sort of set us apart from the other FPS game out there because there were so many human based FPS games and we didn't want to come up with something and compete in that space there's just so many of it and um, you know, sci-fi is just a lot easier to build in a fantasy setting. You can actually duplicate assets. And uh, mechs, there's no humans, so it's, you, know, you have to worry about facial animations, <laughs> human animations. So it's all of those um, things sort of come together, and Hawking just sort of makes sense as a project for the whole, the whole team. And where did you draw inspiration from the game's visual style? Uh, the visual style of Hawking is very inspired by the 80s sci-fi movies out there. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of really Scott stuff like Alien, Blade Runners, and uh, a lot of animes from Japan, uh, Ghost in the Shell, Tekken Ken Creek, and you know, Palabor. And my, I think my background as well in, in Vietnam and where I grew up in a third world country where everything's very organic city and a lot of signage and very dense sort of uh, city life. So that's the look that we wanted for, for Hawking. And how has this game evolved since the Xbox early arcade days? Uh, so our initial plan for the game was as a downloadable title and it has changed a lot since then for the free to play model and I think it's, it's much better for the audience actually because initially we never even planned for customization for a mech. We didn't have, we only have seven or nine people so we, it was just going to be these pre-stack mechs and that's it. But now we're coming out with lots and lots of upgrades and different weapons, different mechs, new, new maps, you know, dedicated servers for free to play games and it's a lot more work and I think it gives the player uh, sort of an experience of Hawking that has a much more longevity. Um, there's always going to be new content coming out and of course the microtransaction side of it um, sort of changed the gameplay slightly and making sure the game is not pay to win even though it's a free to play game things like that. So there's a lot of different things to think about making a free to play game. And can you talk about the world that this game is based in? The world it takes place on a completely different planet. Uh, we didn't want the sort of um, restriction of uh, planet Earth because we might want to have different, let's say, creatures or different um, very strange environment to expand upon. So it takes place on a plan planet called Ilao, and it's a sort of um, it's a human terraformed planet and basically ruled by corporation instead of country because these 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 the companies came to this planet to terraform it and they. The business and the, the structure of, it, of this planet is more rely on the company itself than any sort of uh, government. And wh uh, what's the story that players will explore in this game world? So the story of Hawking is the, the conflict between these corporations and their different ideology of how this world should be. And at the same time how um, it's a lot about... The game itself you know, is really just you know, robots shooting robots. But we're building this whole transmedia side to the property so then when you read the graphic novel, you know, you see the, 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 the webisode that's coming out, and uh, hopefully a feature film, you know, there's a prose novel, uh, all of these things will, once you sort of sink your teeth into these other properties, when you play Hawking, you don't feel like, oh, it's just mech shooting mechs, you really feel there's a sense of story, there's these characters, there's this world, um, very rich world, and we, um, we rolled up a very thick Bible of what everything Hawking and this planet Ilao is all about, so there's, there's this, this, this virus that sort of broke out into this new planet and corporations are now sort of um, fighting over the sort of mineral that this, uh, this virus actually creates as a byproduct and, uh, and it's more about the character living in this world and not just um, the major world conflict. You know, it's sort of like telling a story of World War II but from a very small point of view of a, of a person and that's how the sort of graphic novel and prose novel and uh, feature film will be. Yeah, you're doing some really cool transmedia stuff with this game, and like, how do you see that, like the, like the live action web series, what, what role will that play like in, in helping your game out, like getting the story out there and such? 
Uh, or it works very well for us just as marketing. And at the same time, it allows us to really show the player that Hawking is not just this sterile world that looks cool with robots fighting each other. There really is a lot of thoughts and love going to create the story and content of this, uh, this, this the, yeah, just the lore of Hawking. And it's actually really brilliant because like a lot of the times, if you see something in a show and you can be like, oh, I have that weapon in that game. I have that exact same arm and that exact same chassis. I do the exact same stuff. It can really pull the player into the world more, actually. Like, make them feel like they're a part of something bigger. Yeah, that's, that's what trans, what's really nice about Transmedia is we try to have each piece of the Transmedia product sort of uh, makes the other part richer. So let's say you see a certain character in the graphic novel and you see his whole life story, whatever it is. But in the web episode, maybe he's only have like a one minute time on screen. But then if you read the graphic novel, you really understand that character much more than someone that only seen the web episode or read the, and then maybe the prose novel will expand another part of the story. So they all sort of connect to each other and uh, enrich your experience.